people around and you could just say, you know, who you are and where you're going to be practicing or if you're practicing, it'd be, I, I'd love that. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. I'm Tony Adams. I'm from Clearwater, Florida. I'm general practice. I always thought I was a physician practicing in the mouth. Joined this organization one year ago in May. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I mean, okay, I'm Patricia Schneck from Jacksonville, Florida, and I actually work for Dr. Shields. I'm Rob Herzog. I'm a general dentist practicing out of Albany, New York. I joined the organization six months ago. Good job. I'm Roger Penn, Benita Springs, Florida. <coughs> I had a master's degree in environmental toxicology like before dental school so it was eyes wide open when I was like asking all these questions <laughs> getting hushed in dental school so uh, I've been out since 09 and out of necessity I started my it was like a small practice five years ago because I just couldn't uh, work for a group practice you know 12 operatories blowing out yeah. amalgams and uh, so it's grown every year and you know I've this is my first meeting but I joined a few years ago, and uh, you know, so this is close to home. I'm in Benita Springs, so yeah, yeah, you know. Are you, wait a minute, are you by chance a member of the SMT? Uh, uh, no. Uh -uh. Okay, no. Uh, because we've got a little project we're trying to get going. Oh yeah, okay. So, thought I'd ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go. Mm -hmm. Mark Danola, um, my first meeting was Galloway, mm -hmm. New Jersey, so I don't know when that was, five years ago maybe. And, uh, um, I have my own practice and do all the protocols. And I, I was skeptical of uh, Mercury and dental school, but you ask people and they lie to you. So okay. problem, that's a big problem. And uh, probably was sick a few years ago too. Some people can attest to the fact that I was probably sick. Was? More sick than I am. Was? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm still trying to get it out of my brain. Talking? <laughs> Crawling inside the structure? <laughs> Yeah. Jim Acklemeyer, uh, graduated from Oregon Health Sciences University in 1990. He practiced in Helena, Montana for 26 years. Sold my practice. I'm moving to the West Coast, Seattle area. Um, Russ Borderman is, uh, is the doctor whose practice I'm going to purchase. And, uh, he suggested that I come out here and learn a little bit about holistic <coughs> dentists because his practice is holistic. Great. 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 Tammy DeGregorio. I've been a member since 2009. I practice in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'm serving as vice president, um, Mark's right hand man. And uh, I've been uh, <coughs> practicing holistically since about 2008. I had um, mercury toxicity, so that's kind of like what got me to the academy and uh, changed my practice completely. You know, did a 180, and cool. six years later, it's the best thing I ever did. So. And it's a beautiful practice. Thank you. I'm in Western Maryland. I didn't say that, and we're about two hours apart. Yeah, we're about two so hours apart. So we're going to get together. Right. Uh, Clay Cuvion, I'm a general dentist in Louisiana, St. Francisville, which is uh, 30 miles north of Baton Rouge. Been out and practicing for about 11 years. First conference, uh, great time, great weekend, great information. Looking forward to, to learning more. Dave Warwick, uh, general dentist in Hannah, Alberta, for 32 years, been a member for, I don't know how long, uh, since Kansas City, I guess, uh, in the mid-2000s. And um, I started doing some mercury-free stuff early in the 90s, because I felt I was getting sick and things like that, and joined the academy and uh, never looked back. So. If we need them, guy, we'll grab them. How's that? It's fine. Thank you. And David, I'll add, is our active um, mercury sniffer researcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dave's daughter. I'm Robin Warwick. Um, I graduated in 2012. My first meeting was 2008, so I went through dental school. Um, I work with him in Alberta, Canada. And yeah, it's awesome. awesome. And she's published on. Yes. University of Alberta doing a student, I'm going to brag because she wouldn't, but uh, uh, as a school project she did a mercury exposure to dental students in a dental lab, uh, which was published in JOMT, uh, what about 2012? It was the next 13. 13, uh, one of the high, highest access papers that JOMT has had.
It's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany Shields from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, general dentist, I purchased a practice, traditional dental practice about five years ago and um, slowly making that transition to get into holistic dentistry. And um, it's been great. This is my first meeting. I've been a member about three years. Um, this is the first meeting I've been able to attend. So it's a great weekend. My name is Kay and I work with Dr. Shields. I'm a nurse practitioner and we're kind of trying to uh, Cameron Johnson, uh, both my parents uh, are dentists who have been practicing holistically in Sarasota for since the late 90s, um, waiting to get into dental school. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they made me stay to catch up and enjoy it so far. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? That's awesome. Before school. Yeah, we are. That's great. Yeah, that is great. Well, and, and a great form of frustration, I'm sure. I think that's what most of you have come. I welcome you all here. I'm so excited and glad that you guys uh, came to the conference, especially the ones that uh, for the first time. And I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it. So we'll see you at the next one. <laughs> and, uh, I'm Jack Call. I'm a general dentist in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, I found out about uh, this issue back in 1983. I stumbled into a, a seminar with Hal Huggins. I thought it was going to be on nutrition. And after about an hour, he starts talking to Merker, and I've never heard of any concerns or issues. And I was on a Friday, went back to the office Monday, no one out of it. Was it. So, uh, uh, Joined me, I'm a charter member of the Academy, which is formed in 85. And been doing uh, a few things during the years as chairman of the board and enjoying uh, uh, keep pushing the regulatory effort, understanding <laughs> anything like that, to try to uh, affect some change. Enjoy the remainder. I have control. I think it says I do. So, um, <coughs> And I'm Mark Wisniewski, the current president, but that's just a face because Jack really is the guy that has been really at the helm. So I'm the voice of Jack. If you see his lips moving well, in the voice, voice, and it comes out of my mouth, <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's like that. Uh, uh, Jack's really the, the guy that uh, knows everything that's going on in the academy, and um, I'm really glad also to see that you guys are here. And, welcome you and um, like we sit up and we're the late crowd and hang out and talk with crazy science all night and mostly it's mostly wild dental stuff and um, you guys I hope that you find that you uh, can relate and find <coughs> the same thing because what it's become for most of us is family this is like like an unbelievable um, family of, of practitioners, you you come to the meetings, you you know, you, pretty soon you know everybody, you know, at least, uh, uh, it's just a great camaraderie. If you guys need anything, I guarantee you, any IOT member, you call them, I've had them come to my office <coughs> some time with me, you, we're, we're, we're here to help, you know, and help you. So, um, you know, I encourage you to to um, not uh, certainly don't drag your feet on becoming safe on the mercury removal. You know, it's just like now we have the whole program set up for you, so you can uh, very shortly you'll be able to go to the uh, website for the smart program, and uh, you can click on any all the equipment, and you can order it. I mean, you could be. You could go from no equipment to all the equipment in, in uh, three days. So, um, and email, I'm like an emailaholic. I'm trying to get the board to at least answer emails. And, and, and so uh, we're, we, we're, uh, um, uh, we're very available in any, any which way you want to communicate, you know? So I, I, um, I'm glad to see you're here, believe me. Um, you guys hear Mark? Yeah. Yes. No, I'm just saying. 
can they hear back there? Can you guys hear me? Like you okay? Good. All right. I mean, you're welcome to come pull your chairs, or we have more chairs if you want to come up this way. We all practice a little different, and that's how I look when I do my thing. Um, I guess the only real unique thing is this uh, kind of uh, necklace that has a shield on it um, for that. Um, but uh, some of us wear suits and some of us wear covers. But this is removal of the metal. If you were doing a crown prep on a clean tooth, yeah. would you have all of that on? Um, if there was a metal crown on that tooth, I do it yeah. because usually, oftentimes, there's uh, mercury underneath. And so I don't fool around, and at least during the removal, I have this. And <coughs> okay, so let me say, 13-year-old kid, class two, 14, never been cut before. Would you no, be in that no, place? I would, no. I would not. Just for I, 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 although I feel like I should, and I, it's one thing I, I don't put the hair net on because you know I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> but but uh, uh, but no, I don't. I, I uh, and uh, sometimes I put a gown on, but I always should. But sometimes I put a gown on, and sometimes I don't. But as far as like the, any mask or anything like that, no. I just wear the typical, conventional how I got sick mask. You know? <laughs> so, uh, uh, this is my ozone unit. And uh, if you guys, when you get involved, this is like one of the most exciting things that you, new things that you'll do is like, this is my toy, and you can do everything with that from uh, um, making water to to and using that to injecting bone to uh, putting it in your ears with a stethoscope um, and using this handpiece to ozonate the inside of the tea to. Um, uh, lesions and stopping decay with 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 uh, ozone. This is uh, th this is just a great machine. And I will say that uh, a lot of people come to me from especially from really far away because I have ozone. They want ozone. They don't even know what it's for. They just come in. They like I see your ozone and I just want it. <laughs> Sit down, baby. I just think that there's a word box. <laughs> This is what we were talking about, this oxidation stress, you know, you're replenishing the removal, the ability, the ability of the body to, to alkaline, to, to, to uh, become uh, more homeostatic from, the, from infection, from inflammation. Using the ozone? Using ozone, is, or is it just a, a st steroid? No, no, ozone, it, 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 uh, it will uh, kill all bacteria. Uh, um, viruses I will inactivate. They say viruses. That's kind of, I guess, I don't know. And then I see kill, and um, but parasites um, and fungi. Fungi is very effective. And to me, I notice how effective it is. So um, it sterilizes, and it has some interesting electronic configuration, so that it can react negatively. Very. It seems to. You know, we talk always about it being negative reactivity, but it is very reactive because it has also, it can bond covalently and um, so it's, and it's like drawn to wherever. So you just inject it in the area and it just goes. So um, I use it for, in my practice, I don't use the perio thing, which I'll show you, but um, uh, um, it, it just because it's logistically um, not practical, come on, come on in. Right. So what do you use it for? I use it for me. I generally I will I use it for um, treating osteonecrotic lesions. So if they have surgery, I currently where I am with it is I want surgery when I see uh, cavitation. So surgery and I ozonate surgery, and then three or four or five afterwards, a week apart, they come and I inject it into the area to make sure everything is killed and uh, 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 because they uh, uh, reportedly were having some problem with some reoccurrence so I want both of those things <coughs> I used to do it that only but um, the bone doesn't always close in when you only use ozone so I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that 
So I want both. But uh, some guys are just, I, I have done it, and sometimes just putting them through a series of ozone injections. So that's one thing. The, uh, um, the water we use to put in the bubblers of our uh, unit, you can uh, put some glass jars. And um, they actually, uh, Maddie, who's not here, has the, they have this whole big jar like this. And it's set up with, uh, with spigots. So that, yeah. And every day he's filling this big jar with ozonated water. And they put it in their units. You're wiping your counters. You know, washing your hair. Is this ozonated water fairly stable then? Uh, it, it, when you, once you uh, once you ozonate, come on in, Demir. Come. The uh, um, uh, once you uh, ozonate it, they say um, those guys say half a day. You know. This stays cold. Uh, pardon. This stays cold as well. Yes, temperature is okay. really big. Temperature cold. dependent. So, there you go. So yeah. So, but the, the bubble is running like all the time. So if you need fresh, you know. Uh, if you want to take a belt, it's a good pre-rinse. It. It's a good pre-rinse too. Yeah, pre-rinse. Some guys use it for pre-rinse. Yeah. Uh, I use it in my Train, hygiene, hygiene, sure. in hygiene units when they're uh, doing the scaling and cleaning. So it'll yeah. keep your lines clean in your office. Yeah, and then and then I use oftentimes this handpiece when I see anything that's really you know the questionable tooth that in most offices so that needs a root canal. If it does, if, if I can bang on it and there's no pain, I, I, I pull out the foot pedal and the hand piece and um, I go short. Yes. You know, I just stay short of the nerve even though it might be staining. Uh, um, now I ozonate and seal it up and that seems to take care of it. I After the prep, you ozonate the... Ozonate the inside. Yeah, you t and uh, currently they're talking about, if you're leaving it purposely, you're going to stay very careful because I, I don't want my patient to lose their tooth. I'll leave if decay if it looks like I feel like I'm getting to the clear layer. And you can tell the stain is different around the clear layer. Then um, I stop. And then I just ozonate it and ozonate it for about two, three minutes. With If I'm well away from it, I might use 50, 60 gamma. If I'm close, then I'm going down there 10, 15 gamma. You know, I don't. You, I, 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 I've seen, and I don't have enough teeth to tell you, but I've seen where, um, where I was. I thought maybe I was so close that I used 50 gamma, and then the tooth was was active afterwards. So, uh, but oftentimes this is takes care of the tooth. It's not going to be a root canal. Yeah, that's a critical thing because you're. You're increasing blood flow. You want to kill the bugs, and so that's that's a good point. You know where you are. Yeah, I try to because I mean sometimes you can see like the heartbeat in there. You know, it's like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I I um, but it's a great thing because many times people will come to me and say, oh, they told me I need a root canal. Look at it. No, don't pay. You don't need a root canal yet. We I watched Russ do a similar treatment on an asymptomatic tooth from a patient who had come from Portland and driven three hours to see him in his practice and he was able to decay. That's contraindicated in mainstream dentistry. You don't you leave no soldier dead or alive. They don't even tooth. use a stain. They don't even most you know, this is the problem with Cares the mercury fillings, right? That was so almost how, how do you deal with that with the board? No, no, you have to, that's, that's about informed consent though. That, when you do that, you tell the patient, listen, we're close to the nerve. I'm, I've left some, I've treated with ozone. We, we'll do a radiographic monitor on it. We'll follow it up and see how it is, but just so you know. Once you, yeah, really if the patient knows, me. if the patient knows, you're fine. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I told Russ on that day that I'll buy a mistake if that tooth survives. No, you put it's the so ozone far. on it, it's done. Baby. No, every it's it's yeah, yeah. Get, your, get your wallet out. <laughs> you do a good job bonding, it's not a problem. I don't know. Well, now you've got fear in me. I don't, I don't think about the board. Do you see, you know, leave decay in the tooth? No. The idea, well, the concept is killing the bugs. You've been doing that. Okay. Well, you flunked the board if you leave any decay in the tooth. Now there's research. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, uh, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> no, even <laughs> you, no, you do not. I don't have it right here, but I was, did some pediatric dentistry right at school. There's research on leaving decay, um, even outside of holistic. In mainstream, yeah, in mainstream dentistry, leaving a layer of decay. I was just in a meeting, and they talked about that yeah. the whole time. Yeah. 
We well, talk about it. Really we that purposely In leaving Chicago. it to stimulate secondary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, you know. Yes. Yeah, the surgical procedure I sent oh. you once uh, called stepwise excavation, where you put calcium hydroxide paste on the stain and do a temporary filling, and then you revisit after yeah. six months, perhaps one year, and mm -hmm. you do like uh, we close, I close with the glass ionomer cement, and you get the uh, remineralization effects and. and somehow retracts and then build secondary <coughs> and secondary dentin. And then you go after six months or one year and clear the clear the stain and you'll have step by step you'll have <coughs> the hard clean dentin. So this is yeah. the application of yeah. So he's totally like interested that. about No, that. this is great. Does the IAMT have a position on silver diamine? And whether so that we would do be, not. No. Tell, tell me about it's it. It's silver diamine fluoride. Silver diamine fl fluoride, that's right. So I guess they would. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Don't leave. <laughs> this is all. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a position on it. That's the position. Yeah. We asked David Kennedy. He might be on I asked jump him about that, that, and he said that he's a completely against it for that reason. Whatever Dave's against, we're against. Yeah. <laughs> if it has an F. Yeah. yeah. F and So, F and did I answer your question yes, for this? Very much. Yeah, you can also do nasal uh, ozone. So, if you have sinus problem or you want to get it into your lungs, <coughs> you bubble it through uh, olive oil, organic hopefully, and then um, you're breathing it, and it's an ozonide, and now you can treat the sinus and the lungs. And but does it enhance that pH we've heard about all weekend? It, it it changes the NAD P balance. So yes, so in, indirectly. It the balance that's yeah. off in an unhealthy organism. Yeah. yeah. At least indirectly. It's grabbing electrons and dropping, yeah. bringing the pH. And that's what you want. Yeah. So it'd be you could classify it as an antioxidant. It's, it's also oxidative. It's kind of Super weird. Superoxidizer. Yeah. Superoxidizer. A lot of guys are big, and this is um, I don't do it often enough, but when you put that stethoscope in their ears because the tympanic membrane is so innervated, it, it's a good way to get ozone to the head. You just put that in and, you know, your patient is flying. So, um, so if for anyone, if you're starting your practice, my sign changes, as I told my sign guy, who's done several signs for me, because I've had several practices, this is my last sign, you know? <laughs> They're expensive, you know? So I, I picked a, a Cocapelli because um, he's the teacher, the trickster, and um, it has nothing to do with the fertility thing. <laughs> <laughs> But, but uh, uh, you know, that was why I chose that. And uh, at the last minute when I had, this was um, science-based dentistry, but at the time I realized I'm reading about how they're ruining science and how every, it's all, the, it's just like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. I called them up, I'm like, you didn't paint, you didn't paint science yet. No, no. So I now I became bio, biologically based because I just, because of the public is learning now and when you see the word science, it's almost like getting to where like, oh my God, you know, skip it. Yeah, yes. skip it. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, you, and, and, but your beliefs and your personality is going to change if you're detoxing and so, you know, make friends with your sign guy. <laughs> uh, the most important face for your practice is your website, of course, you know. Get a good website person. <laughs> and um, for me, my website drives, because I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and I'm sure even no matter where you are, people come from everywhere. They see ozone, you can opt and make sure that you optimize your website. Um, myself, I stand tall with Dory. But our academy is with Equa, and they have kind of a different look, and um, they're all they're all um, good at it, I'm sure. But um, for me, this is this is who I um, have been very and most happy with. And uh, make sure you're um, optimized and you're ready to look at it on the phone because I don't know. Some people don't even have a computer anymore, I guess. 
So this uh, uh, slide I took from a lecture I did for some hygienists. And uh, you know, we all use this at the top, every universal nutrition and exercise. And, um, and then you've got to integrate this. So it's, go ahead. Uh, you have nutrition and exercise on there, and I have quite a few young moms coming to me with Rami Nagel's book and wanting to know if they can cure their kids with just diet and supplements and stuff like that, and wanting me to do ozone and, you know. What do you, what do you think? Well, I have only five years of experience under my belt as a dentist. I would like to believe that that is true, but I don't know. I've been told by two holistic dentists here that it doesn't work and don't even think about it and drill and fill every well, single time. Well, I'm going to tell you that for me, I mean, I always say if it's deep decay, um, I don't tr trust it. I'm I talking about stuff chance. that's small to medium-ish. Yeah, uh, surface decay, especially with ozone. Yes, you can you can stop it. You can stop it from growing. But you still have to drill in to get to it to ozonate mm, it, right? Uh, if it's down in there, I feel better if I'm drilling it. But as far as diet goes and reversing decay, I think probably you can do some stuff that if you are really perfectly healthy, you're eating enough minerals and your minerals are balanced and you'll have to learn from this guy about balancing minerals. Um, I do, you do see, you see this, what do they call it, arrested decay. You drill it out, it's black. And it's like, oh God, I didn't even need to drill this thing, you know? And um, so, can it happen? I think it can happen. I'm reading a book right now, I just got uh, um, dental, um, what's it called? I have to email to you, dental tubule flow oh, of yeah. the, for decay. And so now you start to realize there's a pump, and what that, and so now if you're pumping in minerals, and you're stopping and keeping all the bacteria out, and it's bringing in the antibodies, why not? But do I trust it? You know, people eat sugar. Oh, I just have a chocolate at night. I don't know. I, and as soon as you eat sugar, you bam, you're a step, you know, two steps back. So that's what they showed in that book is that if you eat sugar, dental tubule flow stops. Reverses it. So, uh, so, yeah. It'll yeah. reverse. It'll yeah, suck. It actually sucks yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That, that last presentation yesterday, but yeah. I was out for day yeah. two and, and all that. That's something. Did you get to see that? Dr. Simon's work? Yes. yes. Yeah. And that, that's what Mark started doing. Were you talking about baby teeth or permanent teeth? Uh, well, they're mostly like two year olds and three year olds right. that yeah. parents are bringing to me and like one and a half year olds, and they've got anterior decay and they want to know what they can do that's natural because they don't want to do general anesthesia. Maddie for their... uses iodine. Maddie, uh, uh, I know that he, he says he has great luck by just taking 2% Lugo solution and have the parents uh, two or three times a week um, rubbing the decay with the iodine and Maddie swears that it just that doesn't progress. So, yeah, I think that it's very possible. I'm not too, with kids, I try to do certainly as little as I can do. What is the book that you were talking about? The book the about the flow. Spielman, Stein. email me, please, and I, I'll send you. Uh, I, I, I just got it, and I started reading it. It's fascinating. These guys did, all, they spent their life, he hooked up with the endocrinologist, and they, he, they spent their life doing this work, and then, of course, they started showing the fact that it, uh, hormone release from the hypothalamus, it comes to the um, parotid, the parotid hormone release, and it starts this fluid flow out of the teeth, of the entire tooth, which is totally protected. It happens like 10 minutes after you eat. And um, then they showed that if you give the uh, rat sugar, that it actually immediately reverses it and sucks in. They did dye testing, sucking it in. And then they put the rats in little uh, cages and showed that the stress of being in a small, unmovable cage, it sucked and it started sucking in. So it showed stress, they showed sugar, and that's about as far as I got the book so far. It's but Steinman. I'm Patrick. showing a picture Steinman. of the cover. Steinman. Steinman, yeah. I got yeah. a picture of the cover of it. All right, oh, beautiful. Yeah. One suggestion I have <laughs> if they don't have a case in allergy is MI paste with no fluoride. 
That's what I use it's quite a bit good. with I mean, the parents. I, yeah. How do you, I usually am just instructing them to put it on after they brushed and flossed and to just kind of let it sit there yeah. as long as they can. Is that how you're? Yeah. And then in, if you have really bad caries, like I've, you know, soda drinkers, you have a class five. So if you don't touch them, get them on MI pace for two weeks and then you start looking at what's remineralizing. Or if you have deep caries, you know, and you're, and you're prepping, you'll see it flood, it'll be white at the bottom because it's pulling it all in. So you, that could stop the pulp or anything. Over here. The, the, the problem, the only problem, that I, we have MI paste as well. Be aware that it's uh, saccharine. And oh, so really? most of the time, yeah, most of the time these people that. don't, and they, oh, you're really. So, so you have to acknowledge that, and then you, you, because most of the time these people are organic and they yeah, don't want that, you know? Yeah, do Zolotol. Uh, Demir has something yeah. different. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but knowing the science of Western Price, uh, he proved that uh, uh, it can be remineralized just using proper nutrition. So Vitamin D and K are yeah. K2. important beyond belief. Yeah, but they come naturally from the nutrition, mm -hmm. so the nutrition it should be like the most capitalized uh, yeah. among folks. So, so the book is uh, written by George Imani, if you know, you read it or something. So, yeah, so uh, what, what are we doing? Just looking at everything is in there because it's actually all nutrition. It's his own, own so pass it around. No, everyone wants to see the cover. Do you want to see the code? Like, How about Can you speak up? Yeah, speak up so everybody can hear us. Yeah, it is. It's it's fundamental what you're saying. He was like the greatest dentist ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that, West and, and he proved it. Of course. He it's Canadian. He proved it with radiographic pictures. Like, he moved here. Uh, he left. He'd help you with that. Even baby did open. And then by, only by changing nutrition, he could get, like, uh, not only healing of teeth, but uh, even, you know, fractures, fractured bones. Uh, that he wouldn't heal for, like, six months. He, did, he just uh, re-adjusted nutrition, and, and he got amazing healing. And the second book, the one you have, is like the fundamental of nutrition. So, so yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's uh, most of these people that are coming are, you know, Western Price um, wise and or at least familiar. So you should take time to read the book and and, and know that and decide for yourself as you know whether he's hundred percent right or not. But at least be able to be talk to people about it. Came across a uh, a husband and wife. They're from British Columbia. We've kind of been in discussions with them, uh, me and a buddy of mine in Austin. They formed a website uh, company called The Dental Essentials, which took Everywhere Western Price's research and has cool. vitamin D3 and K2 drops and uh, some multivitamins. You know, I, I don't know necessarily. I, I've been I, I have them, and if anybody's interested in, in kind of that product. Uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to to answer any questions or, or, or help direct if, if that's something you'd like to maybe try to implement or give them options or direction to. I but actually have it for my own self and children. What's okay. the, what's You've the been product using called? What is the product? Dental Essentials. Dental Essentials. It's Jack, you emailing me that? Yeah. And the only other caveat to all that we've discussed and something that's new now compared to when Lesson Price did his stuff is the is especially the, the exposure to heavy metals during the formation of the tooth. The work done in Brazil has shown that the profile of metals that is exposed to the fetus during especially deciduous tooth formation can make the tooth so weak that really any therapeutic is almost useless. Um, because all of the bonds within the enamel are being obstructed by lead, mercury, Manganese, uh, and there's a really a couple of really good articles from the Brazilians on this. So, it's like a mutagenesis Yeah, well, it's not even that. It, so it looks like a normal enamel, but it just it just <coughs> is so weak, and it's more prevalent than probably we think. So the hydroxyapatite. It's it's, it's like taking the crystal and and putting little weak bonds in it, and so it's uh, just not strong, and so we're dealing with that right now that I think we're not really understanding. Right. No, we. Understand more every meeting. Mm -hmm. That's and one why you thing got to be here every meeting. One it's thing like about patients, uh, if you're new at holistic, just 
don't be arrogant about what you think you know, <laughs> yeah. because you'll learn something almost every day. You never know people. everything. No, <laughs> this is, you know, what I always say is, uh, this is what I'm thinking today. <laughs> because I don't know what I'm going to say tomorrow. And yep. you, you, you need to say it because you're going to change your mind. I used to do root canals, and now I'm just like, you know that root, I just saw a guy this week, you, you know that root canal? It's got to come out, it's, it's, it's showing infection. He said, you did that. I said, yeah, 15 years ago. You got 15 years, dude. Sorry, no refund after uh, uh, root canals, there's no refund at all. I say, you pay before you get out the door, because if it doesn't work, you lose. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do them anymore. I, I, I just quit doing them. No, seriously, my patients know that I come here in March and in September, and so they come and see me after the meetings, and they're like, give it to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the what, what's the new thing? What are we changing? I, what's, I, yeah. They'll be disappointed. Yeah, really if I'm down down low. Low. Honestly. All the staff's, yeah. like, ready, too. All the staff's so. ready. Yeah, I sent email. Yeah, the staff wants to know what are we changing. But I sent email to my patients just not very often, but every few months maybe I try to. And uh, what I'll do is I'll wait until I get the videos from the lecture videos, and then I send them usually to my favorite uh, video that we had, and I say, hey, you know, you should be taking iodine, you know, and uh, um, you should think about it. Maybe you should decide. Look at this movie. You're gonna, and people love, you know, they love to see what you're learning, and uh, and also listing all of every class on your website. This is my continuing education. And, um, it, you know, we cover so many different things. When you put that on your website, people oftentimes will say to me, I came to you because I'm so impressed with all the stuff you learned. I said, I'm glad because I'm glad you didn't say it, uh, yeah. that you know. <laughs> I'm actually going to kill you because every woman that works for me, my whole staff is here. And they all want to get pregnant with geniuses now. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on. It's, yeah. it's like every single one of them. They ordered the iodine. <laughs> yeah, I went to a They ordered the sperm. I tried to get to the I'm yeah. serious. I was like, let's pace this out. You yeah. know, I have lots this, of women this, this in childbearing This kid could support like, us for the rest of our life. And, you know, come on, spit one out for me. Let's get some iodine. It's like the Catholic oh, Church. You know? Seriously, my associate has three kids. They're all girls. And she's like, I want a genius boy now. I'm like... <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> was, was the position of uh, Academy uh, to Ram Ramiel uh, Nigel's book? You know this uh, Ramiel Nigel? Two decades? Yeah. Ramiel Nigel. Two decades. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 uh, do, did you read it? Do, do you know this book? I do. It's a kind it's of re recapitulation of uh, Western Price. Yeah, he does Western a lot of Price. That. Yeah. Um, I mean, he does talk about the basis of nutrition being important, right, and yeah. and all of that. I think, yeah. That's coming from from West Coast, I guess. Yeah. yeah. He's you not know, a dentist. We, we are like He's a, not a really dentist. Strictly yeah. a science group, so like uh, Western Price is science, yeah. but also lots of mostly observation and with a keen insight. So we don't like take a stance and say you should follow Western Price. We try to uh, make Dave do the study and then we can say it. You know, because uh, we, we've got to have science, you know. Yeah. So, direct email. I mean, this is and this is what the, the, this whole uh, 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 slide is about here. And this is, uh, um, Stuff that is science, you know, we can <coughs> put our hands on at the top and accept it as science, and then maybe some stuff that's somewhere in the middle, and then down here, you you know, now we're into witchcraft. But uh, uh, some people do it. I don't think it's wrong. I would say today I don't really practice using um, aromatherapy and things like that. But do I think it's not? Does it work? No. I don't have time to learn about it, and I have never seen any science-based uh, based, uh, studies on it that are, have been acceptable. Doesn't mean they don't exist, but for my practice, I stay away from um, the art lifting. Uh, you know, homeopathy to me is pretty much science. Now I accept it, but um, I still can't really get there as a full-time basis of homeopathy. I want to use. Um, ozone and stuff like that. And this uh, AMA or e, 
uh, uh, EAV is also something that is, um, I think, science, okay, because this can be measured on a scale now with uh, when you're checking the acupuncture points where it leaps is when you're talking about these energy meridians. And I have a meridian chart on my website in my office. I always find it interesting to look at that. This root, you have a root canal. Oh, it says kidney problems. You're kidding me, you know, and I like, uh, I don't know, that's just the witchcraft that I partake in, and uh, it says it's connected, you know, and so I think that you, it's amazing how much it, it, so it's less than witchcraft, you just know. Just be careful with your state boards, yeah. with, yeah. with something we, like that. The, the, you're talking about meridians? Well, no, about oh. the EAV oh, okay. devices, yeah. that some state boards will just come down on you hard if they find out you're using those, that modality. I have a big sign in my front lawn that said no board members are allowed. <laughs> okay? I don't, I, I don't, I, yeah, that helps. I don't think about them. And I, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just a shotgun guy, you know. <laughs> Proceed, show me yeah, yeah. uh, Do your patients often come in and, ex and uh, you have to educate? They want to, yeah. They, 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 They're they, curious the, about that green. Some of them only operate here, you know, and, and uh, if it's not witchcraft, it's, they don't want it. So, I, you know, I give them some composite, they go to their chiropractor, he pushes on their arm, they come back, this one's no good, this one's good, uh, okay, good, you know, we'll do, we'll do it that way. Um, I, I, I um, suggest, no, I do blood tests, I want to have Clifford, I want to look at the antibodies that are there, and um, I don't think it's bad, I just don't think everybody can do kinesiology and they all think they can. How many people are at the table are from Florida? This only really applies to Florida. What was the question? I just asked who was from Florida. A friend of mine, an orthodontist that I refer to, is chairman of the board of the state of Florida. His name is Bill Kokenow. And so when I started this venture after last March, uh, I started changing my whole philosophy and practice. I was very concerned what battles I was going to have to fight or what threats I was going to have to face. And so I went with Bill and I asked him, I said, you know, this is what I do. You know where my head's at and my heart's at. Uh, he said, the thing that you have to do, Tony, uh, to stay clear is be sure that you inform and that you document that you inform. So inform consent for whatever you do. He said, uh, then how do, how do you feel about mercury? I said, well, I think it's toxic, and I think it's wrong, and I think it's covered up by the ADA. And uh, he said, well, it would probably be prudent for you to tell the patients that you, the ADA's position is that it's safe. Your position is that you think it should come out. But he said, be careful about implying that Merkur causes illness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, the, that's where you cross the line. That's when you inform, when you say that, and then yeah. document what yeah. you've informed. You got it. You, at least off the first round of that. Yeah, I don't think, you know, I don't, um, I become friends with all my patients, so I really do mm -hmm. not care about the board, what, and I do what I, you know, I always say, nail me to the cross. I'm doing exactly what I think is right, and if you're going to come and bust me for it, all right, I'm going to go, you know, become a carpenter, you know. So, I, but uh, I don't really, uh, this whole, for me, in my, I've been doing with this academy for eight and a half years and detoxing for eight and a half years, basically, in um, the fear of, uh, of them looking over my shoulder and now is gone. I don't operate on fear anymore. Yeah. And I actually, uh, you know, I'm the other way. Bring it, <laughs> you know, because, uh, uh, but you, you can't say that uh, if you take your mercury out, you, this will make you better, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, you got to use your brains, and I say the same thing. Root canal, I would never have one in my mouth. You want it, there's a specialist that does it, and then, you know, and I, I could use the money uh, um, and I would do it for you, but I'm not going to do it because I wouldn't have it in my mouth. I'm not going to do it for you. So, and mostly I, I have hardly anybody that does root canals because I, that's my stance. Yes? Um, 
So I respect the fact that you could care less if they come and knock on your door, but I'm just out of dental school and I have <laughs> a crap ton of debt and I cannot <laughs> afford to have my dental license taken away. So um, I don't take out root canals when people come in and they want them taken out because if there's no pathology on the x-ray, I'm concerned that I'll get in trouble for that. Has anybody had any you give them a Problems consent for elective you removal. You can have a consent. Yeah, you just need a consent for it. I mean, we have elective removal of mercury amalgam. We have elective removal of mercury Yeah, that's tooth. different yeah. than taking a whole tooth out. Though. No, look, here's the deal. No, if you, we have elective removal of tooth. Do you have a cone beam in your office? No. Okay, you find somebody who has a cone beam, and I would tell you, when you look at it with the cone beam, at least 95% or 98% have lesions. You don't need to talk anymore. You look at it with the cone beam, I'm, and we take almost every one out based on the pathology and the cone. The pa patient says, if there's pathology there, just because it doesn't hurt, no, I want it out. You know, so it's, let them make their own decision. You know, the, the elective care that we do, so someone has some diastemas and you're going to do veneers on virgin teeth, so they're electing to cut the virgin tooth. I mean, I, that might be harder to... You think about these things that people do all the time. I, I do, okay. you know, and, and most holistic do feel like, you know, that they don't want you cutting their teeth to make them look pretty, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I, I struggle with that a little bit. You know, I'm the first in this field of endeavor. And, uh, but I had a lady, my, my marketing is fairly good, and it's getting some reach. It's internet. And uh, I had a lady come to me from Texas. And I said, I tried to encourage her to find somebody in Texas that she wanted to come to me. She came to me. She had, she's a beautiful woman, probably about 50 years old. Uh, she had beautiful dentistry done, technically as good as it could be. She had 17 teeth that had root canals, and she wanted me to extract all 17 teeth. Okay, she had, why would she do that? She had had a diagnosis of breast cancer, and she was afraid that it would, she was clean. She was afraid that it would come back and she would rather not have her teeth to fight that battle. I turned her away. I turned her away. I said, there are people in, in, that you can find. I said, that if you come to me and said, I have a tooth with a root canal and it's bothering me and I do not want to retreat it, okay, I'd want to have it extracted. And I thought, who could deny that? But for me to take out 17 teeth and help me, because it's, it's, it still bothers me, uh, 17 teeth, uh, how do I justify that before the attack that I would get from the board? You're well, not going to get attacked. But the first you thing the patient's you, asking you to take them out. Uh, but the other thing is, if it, it also is important about your comfort. And if you're not comfortable, you shouldn't do it for 100%. But what, what you ought to think about is getting into the network and finding people that can remove these things successfully and using PRF and, and know what they're doing to remove these things. And find someone that's good. There's, there's someone in every corner of the earth here. But then you can give them an answer. On the other hand, right, shortly about that same time, I had a, a woman who brought her grown, uh, mentally challenged daughter who was probably emotionally and mentally about nine years old, but in reality was 40. Uh, and she had four anterior uh, root canals, uh, seven through, through ten. And uh, the girl said, I feel like I can't think. I, my head's not right. Well, I don't know what right would have been for her, you know. But I took the, uh, the end of the the mirror and I tapped them and they all they sounded different to me. The, the resonant with it. It just sounds different. But then I know that there's something resonating on the end of that that's not right. And I did I extracted her teeth. Okay. And she was thrilled with it. She said she felt better in every way. We made her a removable appliance. Mm -hmm. Well, the more you remove the root canals, the more you understand yes, what they do. You get confidence. <laughs> and, it's, a, it's a learning yeah, thing. Yeah. But don't worry about it. Just, no, just they're just steps. Well, yeah. But if some people want it, make sure you have a referral for it. Our yeah. oral surgeon, we have a cone beam in the office. Okay. He swears that's the standard of care. And when, I mean, when you see the lesions on the root canals, like we don't really have to sell 
taking them out. You show that to your patient, and they'll, I mean, nine times out of ten, we still refer to those hard line patients. We refer out to an endodontist. I mean, you can't change, you don't want to change people's minds, but you always give them the option. But you need the cone beam. I think it's 100%. Yeah. You have to. 150,000 in Canada. But so, people have them, so you send them to somebody who has one. I've got a friend who's got one, and he'll do it for 175. And they'll rip a that's CD, a, they'll a rip deal. a DVD for you. And then you yeah, you could learn to sure. read it if you want, but it takes some learning curve there. But um, the um, in my area, they have, there's three or four services that have a van. They'll go right to your house and do it for you. They have that clear well, one too. Yeah, so, so to be, at this point, I feel, and I think most of my colleagues feel, that's the most definitive assessment of all of them. But I tell my patients, it's, you know, we got the 2D x ray. If you want more definitive, we need to look at a cone beam, and then they decide for themselves. And uh, no, I, you, it, it's possible that that person with 17 root canals. Maybe that's not her problem as what well. I'm not qualified to diagnose her mental stability or emotional stability or or her cancer or anything. Uh, uh, yeah, no, you're not, and you're not required. But you know, you felt nice towards her. I mean, why would I not? She's a lovely lady. I just didn't feel safe personally, so I chose not to do it. I, I, it's fine. You know, I've no. gone from the from the time when I was really toxic. Is so if you're not going to do a root canal then you're going to have to go down the street. I'm not going to take care of you anymore. Now I say, you know, I'm almost like, if you're going to do a root canal, you better go down the street again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, uh, believe me, it's like, what are you doing today? Mark, can I just talk about the DNA? The, the other thing you can do is it's easier when there's like one root canal. You can get the DNA and see what's going on there. Unfortunately, they're not doing that uh, test anymore, the paper test. Paper point it, test. Are they just taking the root out? Only they're only testing Fluid. the root canals that are extracted. They're only testing. Uh, they're not wick. You're not wicking. Not wicking anymore. anymore. No. I must have some old kids. Preview. They're not doing previews. They call them. No, they're doing a full. Oh, that's right. What are they they're doing? doing are you use? Are they able to wick them? Yeah. So, okay. Sorry. So you you would basically get a sterile paper point and and you pump the tooth. You know, have a patient pump the tooth. Wait, I don't understand. So your your so your 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 fluid will have DNA okay. from the apex. You okay. don't think it does, but it come up. One hundred percent of these things come back. With we've seen E. coli and bugs you don't want in your jaw, and so I mean if if the patient sees the virulence and they see that chart, and you can kind of explain it to them. And then you have a cone beam that shows it's an dental access. DNA. Uh, they you, names, they just change names. Yeah, there's some ugly bugs, and they name them like appropriately cadaver, and, uh, you know, and all this stuff. So that uh, uh, you know, it's it, it freaks you out when you see all those bugs in the in the in the molecular uh, fluid of that tooth. So this is something here that you have to decide on for yourself. And um, you know, when you get back, um, your staff is the first thing, and this has generally been the biggest problem for people taking it back to your staff. And um, so I'd say you have to educate and you can't, you know, although I just come in and, you know, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing this, and my assistant's thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna quit again, <laughs> and, and, you know. And, um, but she has to divorce me because she's been with me for like 20 years. So um, um, I, I um, say now we have this beautiful e-learning uh, and the modules online. I would even pay my staff and, and make them go home and watch the modules and, and um, say, I'll pay you to do this. And then we'll talk about it the next day. And then I did this. I would buy lunch and say, you guys, today I'm buying lunch and you're going to have to sit down and listen to me lecture about what I just learned. And then I would tell them, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and this is what uh, Boyd Haley said, and uh, if Boyd said it, it's pr probably in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, so then, then when you, but the, the freak out is that they, they need to learn how to do the new duties. So I realize that I want it, I do it myself with them, and say, and then they become very comfortable right. with it. Demir, what did you say? Is a good thing, man? 
Yeah, it's a good thing you went to bed. <laughs> so, uh, um, you sometimes you don't certainly you don't want to fire your staff, but if if they're not on board, it's many times you finally have to let them go. Um, I've heard it, you know, more than once. They that the hygienist that won't stop doing fluoride can't stop telling patients they should get it from somewhere else. Um, you know, they're just not on board with your thing, and then I guess, you know, it's just not going to work. And so I always, <clears throat> of course, I think they will come, but they don't always, uh, are they able to, especially hygienists that have been doing it for a long time, man, get them, get that fluoride on their hand, it's like, they, you know, they drink it for breakfast. <laughs> now I had to get fresh hygiene, like, right out of school, because you can't change an old hygienist's mind, so my hygienists are like, fresh little babies that were only taught my way. But that's why you're in trouble with potential pregnancies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. I just think I want the lectures run by me before they get up on the uh, on the schedule, okay? <laughs> so I can decide who I'm bringing with me, okay? So what do you guys do about, like, I just bought a pre-existing practice and um, from a, a dentist who moved um, to another state and it was her dad's practice before it was hers. So the patients that I have have been there for like 50 and 70 years, like they're really old. And they're used to having their fluoride and they don't want to not have it. And well, how do I you don't know? want them to go away. But how, how do you know that? Well, they ask. Because you try not to get it to them and they're, where's my fluoride? Then you, but the and point so is, coming like, to these this? meetings, coming to these some meetings. flavored <laughs> yeah. But when There's you come here, strawberry. you're getting the alternatives. Yeah. So you can often assume this is what we find. This is this is what I'm thinking now. Yeah, we don't want to do it like Grandpa did it because we've learned some new things, or Father, or you know. And so I'm young, and we and this is the state of the art. Most of the time, patients love the new doctor because they know all the new stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you have to become <laughs> confident, and then it will become easy. And then you'll make less money because you're not getting any fluoride treatment. Yeah. <laughs> but so you're going to get more patients. But also, you tell them that you're considering their whole body health and what, the, how that fluoride is affecting far more than just their teeth. Well, I'm and not doing fluoride that. treatments anyways, but it's the pokey paste. They want their pokey. Well, I'm going to tell you if you're going to become a um, we use earth holistic paste. practice earth paste. and you offer fluoride treatment, they're leaving. Mm -hmm. They're, they're not staying with you if you're offering fluoride. I guarantee it. I have heard it so many times. They say they're flu uh, holistic and they want they, and they're offering fluoride. They want to do and they're offering fluoride for my kid. What's going on? I'm like, well, they haven't got there. So you have to make a decision. You're either going to walk the walk, or you're going to talk some balk. <laughs> so are you doing that on film day? <laughs> Let's have a replay of that. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I don't know if you mentioned it yet either, but you know, one of the things that we, staff and I talked about many, many, many years ago when we made the conversion was the value we're going to lose from not putting fluoride applications on. And that's a pretty big part of the pro, uh, profi, I mean, the hygiene program. So uh, it was a consideration. We just said, well, you know. It's not. It's not an issue. Eat it. But you just. You just any don't any have it. Alternatives. It, it would mean, be like you don't have mercury filling in your office. Any applications that you can apply in, in the office, like xylitol or vitamin D and but, vitamin C. Yeah. I mean, well, you, know, you can make trays and use my paste for people, and I charge right, for Right, but that. if that has what was the saccharin in it, I don't know. But that's my the best. <laughs> well, what you know? What the question Option. is is uh, when you realize what the science is. What them. are you going to do? Create a show for them? I mean, why do you think you need to put something on their teeth in the first because place? It's, it's like you, you just did are. it. Yeah. So when you know the science of it is, well, when you use a profi cup with pumice, the surface layer comes off, and then the reason they put the fluoride was it goes in. Right. I've heard from anything from 30 minutes to three days, it's gone, right. and you swallowed it. So if you didn't put it on there, is it like this rush of bugs? Well, I got to read that. I don't think so. I have to read the dental fluid movement book to finish it. But um, <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm not. You don't need to do it. 
But if you want to make the money, well, you could do my paste, and it's not a bad thing. Um, maybe you want to give them an ozone, put the, uh, some yeah, tray and do trays. something like this. Yeah, or uh, um, if you feel, you have to decide for yourself, and it, it, will, uh, it will evolve for you as time goes on. And it comes with confidence. And when you can look at the patient and explain to them, like, okay, this is why they do fluoride treatments, and you can maybe leave the insurance part off of that story, but um, but you, it's not a scientific thing that we need to do. You know, it's not no, like I, I agree. I think it's just difficult when, especially, I mean, you bought a practice. I think we're in a lot of the same situation because I, I bought a practice from, you know, I mean, fluoride, you know, the whole deal, and these patients love him. I mean, he's like God to them, you know, and so you're a goddess. Yeah, well, they, some patients, I'm getting it's who you are, it's who you, you know, are. Some patients yeah. look at yeah. you like, oh, you're a young female, what do you yeah. know? And then I'm trying to say, we're not going to do fluoride. And they're like, what? I'm going down the street. I mean, you know, I mean, you have to think. Does that ever happen? You know, no. more coming does it happen? Yeah. It does, it's, but they've come let me, back. Let me say this. It, a uh, lot of a new grad's problem is going to be what the wall is in front of you because of what you learned. Right. So what yeah. you need to do is get on the other side of the wall, put it behind you. Don't forget it, but put it behind you mm -hmm. and move forward. Right. And change how you think. Mm -hmm. your, It'll come out in what you're telling your patients. Yeah, That's your it. knowledge base, once yeah. it goes up, you're, you're a lot more confident with what you're saying. I mean, you, right now, you don't know. Yeah, but you're, she doesn't want. She doesn't want fluoride. She just doesn't want no, to not, change. I don't want to use. She doesn't want to lose right. in the first six months those patients. <laughs> right. And she wants, even if it's a little bit of a show, she wants something that's it, healthy what, what to put in her do? mouth for thirty seconds. What are options that yeah. can be done in the for, office that I can yeah. offer as a substitute? Take that time. Yeah. Yeah. Take that time to explain. Trace. You know, so we strengthen teeth from the inside out. We don't put anything yeah. on your teeth. Like you need to do, you know, proper nutrition, vitamin D. Yeah. Right. Um, Teach your hygienist how to do that. Take that time to do that, and you know, like. They'll be. They'll tell her. Yeah. Brodie's at coffee, and then you'll get two more patients, and then <laughs> you won't have to worry about it. Right. right. It works. So okay, so I'm not a dentist. I work for Dr. Shields, but could you give us an example of a dialogue like, how do you back out of we've done fluoride all this time and now we know we're not going to do it anymore because it's so you just did it. You just did it. <laughs> Thank you. I, Good job. I talk about so the science. No so here, here, okay, so now you learn for yourself the science about what it is and why they are doing it, and you say, you know, I went oh, to I this know. meeting and I saw this science, and guess what? It's what this fluoride thing is really not a good thing, and um, so we're not going to do it anymore. And don't worry, uh, you know, it's not going to kill you. It's it's going to save you. In the IOMT website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. They can start yeah, and so you need to read this. We stuff. have brochures too. Yeah, they, we have great fluoride. Panels. Yeah, there's there's they fluoride brochures that will quick. help you. They can look at it as a reference and say, "Wow, this is why you don't That's use fluoride." Yeah. You, you just learned them. it. These people are not going uh -huh. to go away from you. They are going to love you for this. But I forgot that I placed it, and it was not good. And I said, now, Mrs. Miller, you know, this, this, this is a good example. It's, this is new technology. We're going to be looking at your mouth entirely different. We're going to be able to see with a lot more detail you're going to be able to see. And that's the standard that we're going to use. For example, look at this number two or this moment. That filling is beautiful. She said, well, that's fine, Doc. She said, did you put that there six months ago? And I said, well, I guess I owe you a different filling. <laughs> you know? And she loved it. It's always recent, new things I've learned. You're taking away your money at their benefit. They just don't love you. Yeah. It's who you are that's your block. Get over that. With root canals, I say, I, I used to do 200 a year. I stopped, you, I stopped doing them two years ago because I of things I know about it. And you know, I don't say the money part of it, but just saying I don't do them anymore. Two hundred root canals a year, uh, so that says something. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't trust it anymore. And, and there's evidence and stuff. No, I don't like just don't do it. Yeah. You'll be doing something else. Yes. Yeah. Because you're saying that uh, he's dead. Oh, I want you to say, say it. it. Say it. Say it. Out and loud. We'll say it. No, no, say it loud. And I'm zooming in on it. <laughs> so, listen. To, to elaborate on her, 
yes. on your actually uh, topic is is she legally you know uh, does she is there any legal liability because like last week you fluoridated my thing well, that's, that's, that's what my question because now I'm going to tell them like Fluoride's really bad for you, but we did it six months last ago. week when you were here, we put it on, and now I'm telling you it's horrible for you. So hey, now you know. So Why? What about the like, this, like what, you, what about the the mercury <laughs> filling that you put in last week, and now this week you're done with? Well, I didn't do that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so just saying I didn't know. Yeah, I don't. Of course, know. because you it's have the date of the course. What would be worse is if you knew it and, then and continued to use it. Yeah. 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 I mean, bloodletting was a standard of care back. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, I'm still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every this time. Actually, every time you pull a tooth. This guy has <laughs> leech therapy that he uses for well, carried on. GM doesn't apologize for yeah. last year's model. It's, and it's pretty wild. Oh, and it's a funny thing, thing that works. You have to build value all you know, with all your education. You build value you with your patients out. with respect to, you know? Like from the time See, I, I went don't believe in blood from today. traditional yeah. dentistry yeah. to <laughs> what I'm doing now, my, my business has grown right, four no, times. How long were you traditional? I was traditional from 1990 until about 2008. So from 2008 until now, I mean, I'm four times bigger. I'm so busy. I, I don't do a right damn now. thing I did, not it's one yeah. single thing that I did in 2008. Wow. Nothing. And all our patients, you know, hey, we lost some. I was like, see you later. A bunch of them came back, you know. So yeah, That's, one thing yeah, they're, they're, they'll come back. They come Listen back, to that. They're not going to get that. Yes. They leave and they go see what do not this be poor afraid. uneducated guy down the street who hasn't gotten on teacherdentist.com yet, you know, when they go down there, guy. they see what I offer, they come back, you know. <laughs> Do not do. be afraid. Yeah, don't and, be afraid and, for people to walk away. There's one thing luck. in the academy you that the uh, you hear you hear over and over again is that we are doctors. We are not business people here. Mm -hmm. And when you become a doctor, all those fears go away. And some days you eat steak and some days you eat bologna, but it doesn't matter to you because you helped your people all day. And uh, it's not about money, and it's not about losing the people. It's about okay, saving the world. It's a paradigm shift, and you know you're indoctrinated with dental school. It's crazy because you wanted to be. I wanted to be a dentist since I was eight years old, and you, you know you learn all about this stuff. And then, and like she's saying, I'm bit, I'm like booked till through May now. You know, it's just built. Okay, so uh, let's go back to this. Um, <clears throat> about hiring one other question oh, there, I'm sorry. Sorry. I have one comment you know, yeah. I, I tell my patients because they come now they're coming expecting what I you know, I have no clue it would be a miracle I know, <clears throat> about different illnesses and such as that and I tell them I say you know the word doctor does not mean healer teacher, it never teacher. did teacher. there's never been a doctor heal anybody of anything as far as I'm concerned okay. but what it does mean it's a Latin word that comes with docere which means to lead and to teach, and that's what we're talking about. We're a vanguard, we're leaders, hoping to change the world through others by the examples we set and the education we give. Exactly. That's all. Awesome. Can you write that down? Somebody write that down. I got it on film. It'll be on the website. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, wise. That's this wise. is a difficult wise. thing if you have to, and these are a couple of suggestions because finding the right people are very difficult. So. Um, those are things where um, what I would look to ha find the right person. I think the most hardest thing to find is a hygienist that hasn't been brainwashed beyond repair. Um, and then, you know, certainly you bring your staff to the meeting and, and you just, you, you just, you know, now you're going to have trouble because you've got to start buying stuff. <laughs> so, um, the, um, this is the thing that you need to decide, because my, I have to. I'm still. I'm always fine-tuning my front desk, and she's been with me for 25 years, and um, I'm listening when I can and seeing what she's saying. And I, she, people always call about and ask about detoxification, you know, and like, um, um, should I have my oz, root canal ozonated? And and I I take email, you know. I just say if, if either. They, they have to come in for the consultation, but you do not answer anything about detoxification. 
And now she tells them, if you want to talk about detoxification, you have to make an appointment and become a patient. And now what, um, I'm kind of changing how we say that. I'm thinking after this meeting, um, but um, we have to accept you as a patient. So you're going to have to fill out these forms that Dory has, and then I will, the doctor will review them, and then we'll call you if we can help you. So um, it's a you screening, can, screening technique. Yeah. Like so that. you can uh, you could you will actually become uh, now they now when you tell them they can't have it, oh my God, they got to have it. So, uh, uh, and you get to see, you know, uh, beforehand what kind of patient is calling. So, be careful about what your front desk is saying. And the best thing I can say is tell them to say, have them say as little as possible because, and then you better teach them at lunch, buy lunch, take them to dinner. Your staff, you love them. You can't stand it anymore. But I gotta have them some I more. I have time. a quick question. I mean, just about detoxification. What? <laughs> What it, are people doing in their own offices? Make an appointment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, are you what not can happen? Yeah, it's yeah. the reality of it. Okay, okay, so Florida. We are in Florida, so what am I allowed to do and not allowed to do? It's, it's beyond the scope of your practice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know, but I have a nurse practitioner, so. Right. There you go. So you How does that, that, you know, what? what you, need, you need to go to do? detox. Courses. Yeah. Okay. What's, a, what's, a, what's the shotgun guy do? I, I give my patients, I have it on my shelf of what I did. I, I did, um, you know, I don't disagree with Boyd, but I use glutathione supplementally because um, I know that I'm deficient. So it's glutathione, high dose vitamin C, which someday you should see Jaffe and, and see Jaffe's how that works. And then, um, and mineral supplements and what have you and then I kind of write a protocol but first I screen them and um, I might even say to them if I'm not sure I'm like you're not from the board are you <laughs> and I'm not afraid to, you know I'm going to ask them I'm like yeah. you're, you, there's, you're not connecting with me and I said you know what's going on here I said I love my job and I, um, I don't want to lose it and then the wall comes down and now we start to talk so watch what you say because they, that's one thing the board will get you for if you start recommending detox. But I am not afraid to say, this is what I've been doing for nine years. And uh, if you want these products, for me, you can buy them online. For you, if you decide that you believe in DMPS uh, uh, A or, or uh, DMA, or DMSA or DMPS. The, 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 the mercury ones mercury detox conventional things that have been around forever or I also for some people might decide they need that and there's a doctor about 30 miles away that does that so um, it's a it's a drip and it's like 50 trips that they're you're dripping so um, you know cha-ching cha-ching baby there's the kid who cares about fluoride <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, they do so, a little ozone. Is there a pro so what I've been doing is just handing them Tom McGuire's Mercury Detox. That's what I do. Book. I still do that. Is that I, is I, that technically me giving medical advice by handing them Tom no. McGuire's book? No, or did you get it anywhere? No. No. Okay. Anywhere. No, I give them movies to watch and then I just specifically say you should read this and make a decision because I can't decide for you. And in, in the state of Florida. <laughs> If you give a, if you quote a book or you reference a book and a complaint is made by someone, it'll probably come from your peers, other dentists. Yeah. But if, it, if that happens, you've got to be careful that you didn't use that book to take a position because you'll be held accountable for the accuracy of that book. So if you say, so giving a book, I don't. I, 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 you know, it, I'm sure it's state dependent. So I'd you, say um, detox, and get rid of your fear. I, I, Become I, a doctor, understand the science, be confident in what you say, yeah. and then suggest maybe not just one book, but you should look at these different opinions, and then you should make a decision. This is my opinion of it. I go to, like, you know, I spend a couple hours with my patient at the beginning, and I. I, I say, okay, you look at the adv the other side, look at this side, and then this is where I am with it. You decide, 
and you know, then, and so yes, I think I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a, uh, a, I don't want to lose my license either. So you have to know, be aware of the law in your state. You know, my current marketing is not for individual patients. I've done some radio. I've done. You know, we're, we're kind of exploring, so we're doing that. But my current marketing is for allies. And so I join like a holistic. If you're in Florida, there's a woman named Desiree. Holistic Network of Florida. You need to get on that. Okay. And you'll you'll meet people who can provide the services comfortably within the law of the state. And they'll in turn will refer patients to you. A referred patient from an allied healthcare provider always comes with trust and, and, and worthiness. You don't have to sell, you don't have to just do what's right for the patient. So I, I cultivate feeder systems from allies because I can reach more people that way. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say is we have like four or five people in the area of functional medicine that we don't do any um, chelation in the office and we almost we encourage them to have them before they come. Most of them are referred, but it's not unlike your referrals to your oral surgeon or your periodontist where you're going to find, you're going to, you develop these networks and you're going to get way more back than you ever gave. And it takes the headache of, you know, geez, I chelated, you get a call a few weeks later and I feel this or I feel that, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, yeah. but it's uh, the so, ally network. And in your situation, because you have a nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. it's up to you to have her train to She's get the strategies. Well trained, so then, you, so then you, so then you're as long as it's within the. It. No, it's not your, like, but it's not your scope. But if right. the patient wants it, you, it's all about scope of practice. Right. So you say this is you can do this, and we have this surface available in our office. So, so that's, do you think that it's just in it. the state of Florida, <clears throat> having a nurse practitioner, we could do vitamin C IVs? And well, that's up to you. We don't know. You have to figure that out. So you, you said you knew someone scope that knew about Florida yeah. laws. He's a member of the board. I, I, I probably shouldn't have used his name, because, but you can contact the board. Uh, it's a good board this year. Um, you just got to know what, what the law, what the rules are, mm -hmm. yeah. and then comply to the rules so that you don't act like a, a rogue. So yeah, find out what the rules are and learn how to bend them. Yeah. Okay? So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, you don't want to lose your license. That, but you, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you stay within the law, but you, you, you know, you're not going to do it conventionally, and it's not against the law. So you just have to stay within. So anyways, back to this, what we, there's the detox thing, and it's, it's confusing because there's people are doing it different ways. You know, there's, a, a, there's some products out there, and you're going to, it's going to be, be upon yourself, even though you have a nurse in your practice. You need to totally understand what it's doing, oh, yeah. and and you know what I the complications it, are, and so then decide: Am I going to do this? I don't. I don't recommend it usually, but I do uh, try to do it naturally. Has anybody ever tried to read the law? I mean, it's like jargon. You yeah. can't understand yeah. what. No, of course, purposely. I mean, like, so within that, you can. You know, okay, I could say that. I can do that. <laughs> well, then, you know? it's Florida's, ridiculous. Florida's brutal. So I, I mean, I can't. I would definitely yeah. ask. Uh, you know, at least make an effort to ask the board, maybe, but is that at least have a response class? from them. I say, hey, I'm Dr. Schiller. Oh, they know you're there already. Can I, uh, they already know. Do you <laughs> we, we've, had, we've had two people come in that, like you said, weren't quite fitting, you know what I mean? They're checking you out. Yeah, and uh, they ended up just leaving after I confronted them. I mean, I was gentle or whatever but highly suspicious there from the board without being too paranoid. Yeah, uh, uh, we you hear know? this. They will send people in. Of it's, uh, and I, I only had that suspicion once in my years, and I'm not so sure. But, um, yeah, they wanted you to commit to telling them to detox and that they needed this detox. Very specific And it's, stuff. they bring yeah. their own yeah. x-rays. And then, um, you know, and it's just like, you know, get out of here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at you know. Uh, if I can't, if I don't feel like I can go fishing with them, I probably don't want to work on them. <laughs> uh, they, so bait, it, it, the thing about it is, they'll bait you, and it's happened to me twice. Yeah. You know, and they're yeah. checking you out. I was, I was like Google Earth over Hoover Dam, and if you know, I was looking at things. I had a guy show up in my office. They, I mean, I swear it was a NSA or somebody checking out. Like, why is this guy looking at 
Oh, oh, Hoover this Dan. Wait, come on, you're going into your paranoia. Well, that was when I was very toxic. And, 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 so, yeah. I'm sure you and I had this about. friend named Bud. <laughs> so, so, Bud's uh, gone uh, now. Uh, uh, I, I mean, certainly collect all your patients' emails. I guess that's an old timer like me saying <laughs> right. that. But, uh, um, so, for me to educate my parents, I um, created, I created my waiting room. There's no more uh, Look Magazine or National Geographic. It is they, they come to the dentist. They're going to re have to read about the dentist. I run a, a movie slideshow, um, and um, I, I make uh, available to them books and videos that they can take home, and uh, and I put it out there for, so that and I try to buy it. You know. We have stuff available at the academy. I'll show you. We have books and things. You can buy them by the box. They're cheap. And give them away to the patients if you'd like. Or uh, go on the street and, you know, put a can out there and give, give, give some books, you know. So that's another way to uh, change your patients, you know. Get one of these. If you have no room in your place, get one of these tall racks and put the stuff there available for checkout. And uh, people do it. You know, and put health books there. I put, the, you know, Born to Runs there and different things, uh, like because I'm a running guy. But um, stuff that is your personality and things that you want your patient to to grow into. Health. Stuff. So yeah, health, baby, health. Um, so yeah, I do spend, like I say, a couple hours time with my patient, and because I don't. To do it all on the computer, I, I take an index card and it's separate from the file and I write like, okay, they were born, where they were born, where they ever worked, uh, you know, then they mention that that's, you know, okay, this is my second husband, the first one used to beat me, and, I, and it all goes on a card, all of that, go, and it's all part of their health history. It's so hugely important, so I, I, I always want them to be filtering their water, and, um, you know, they tell me, that, oh, I live up on top of you know, the mountains up in the Berkshire, and I have clean water. I says, is that in the United States? <laughs> I said, because well, I, I don't think there is any more clean water anywhere, really. So, uh, I, but you have to decide. And this kind of uh, interview will come with your confidence of really knowing what you want your patient to be. Then we also have uh, a fellow who's he not here, uh, one of our guys who's been around for, he doesn't get into any of that. You know, mm -hmm. you want your mercury fillings out, sign up at the front desk, and he doesn't, you know, you're on your own. So you can run your practice how you want. And for me, it's like, no, I, I you know, the mercury filling removal process is, is easy now. I want to, it's, okay, now I'm going to try to help you as best I can to the doctor. And for, in my area, I've done it twice and it didn't work out good, but when I was new to this, I didn't have any idea what kinesiology was uh, and all of these things. So I went into the phone book and I looked up all, uh, every alternative, you know, pin pricker person that, you know, <laughs> and I said, let's have a meeting. I want to learn and we should talk. And it, it was good. We would, first one was 20 some people. We decided uh, uh, that we would take turns presenting three presentations each time we met, and uh, then it went on. And in the end, um, after each person presented, they didn't appear anymore. And we had three of us that met forever. And those are the three of us are the ones that I knew that I referred to. Mm -hmm. And the other people, I'm like, okay, they they just were here to sell. And I did that twice. I did it went in another town further away. Some and it's idea. a cool thing, and now all of a sudden you get a flavor of all these alternative practitioners that maybe you don't want to do the witchcraft and they do it, <laughs> you know, and then maybe you might want to use them. So I, I, I think that the, it, it, it doesn't, it, it, I sent out, I bet you I sent out 60 invitations and, and we ended up with 20 something. They're interested, they, you know, they need patients also. Uh, I always say you don't know what you have in the chair. So, you know, you do your interview, and then you find out that maybe um, I, we, I shouldn't spend any much time with this patient, you know. What do you want? You, you, I came to you because uh, um, my friend told me to come here, and 
you know, we're going to McDonald's right after this. So, uh, okay, all right, you know, I see the cavity here and that's it, we'll see you. Well, uh, you know, also, like we do a two hour interview and every single patient that comes into our office, we don't accept them as a patient. So that interview, they're checking us out, but we're checking them out. And there are several of them, but after their consultation, we will say, you know, it was great to meet you, but I don't think we're gonna be able to help you. And I, like, I don't treat everybody that walks through the door. So it's not about money, it's about finding the right person. And like those people have a story to tell. Like we're there for two hours and the thing that they all say to us is that no one has ever listened to me. Yeah, like we yeah just, this is, that's really the most important. Because you correlate so spend much. Spend time with your patient. Yeah. If you're going to have a practice that does, you want to practice that you help them get healthy, you've got to do that. If you want to practice like my buddy who just is like, you know, turn it out a million dollars, you know, then do it. But that's up to you. We give you the way to do it safely. Fine. You, you know, go find somebody else. Go to your doctor. You're going to get sick. I have a yeah. question for you. Uh, we're doing a two hour interview as well, and sometimes I'll have patients. I'm like, well, I could sit them in the chair and do a regular comprehensive, you know, thing that I was taught to do in dental school and tell them you've got these fillings and we need to do this, and then they're going to be on their way. And I could try to help them as much as like they're willing to let me help them. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, what kind of patients are you turning away? Um, th there are patients who want holistic therapy, and then they come into the office and they really don't know what it's all about. And so you know, like they they come in and they, maybe they don't really want ozone therapy. Like it's our way or the highway, you know. So patients who question like you know nutritional support. Or the ozone therapy we deliver, they're not gonna. It's not gonna work you out. Say it's not so place I mean, we're not not gonna do it because they don't want. You know, like this is our protocol. This is what you have to follow if you want to be a patient here. And if not, you could go to the guy down the street and he'll put mercury fillings in. So, a question for you, being the person at the front desk that tries to make sure that the doors stay open. Yeah. How do you charge for that two hours? Like, if you decide they're not a, ma you know, not a good fit, are they going to want to pay a fee for being We charge two hundred dollars. They have to pay it to get the appointment up front, and it's non-refundable. And my staff tells them when they schedule it. They say this appointment could be as long, as short as an hour, or as long as two hours. Okay. And they have to prepay for the all time. All that two hours with you? Nope. I have okay. a nurse, and they spend probably the last hour with the nurse, okay. and the first hour with me. Okay. And another thing to the two new dentists and the new dentists in here, after 26 years, there's nothing more invigorating and more empowering than being strong enough to say, you're just not right for my practice. You don't have to treat everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if there's nothing that provides you more confidence and more self-worth, and it seems kind of harsh than to say, you're not mm -hmm. a, a fit here. So you got to be able to say that. Well, yeah. Regardless of what side of the fence you're on, mainstream dentistry or holistic dentistry, you need to be able to mm -hmm. say, you know, you don't have to treat everyone. You can say it like Tammy says it, you know, it's my way or the highway. Right. Well, I always thank them. Like the people that come in, I thank them, and I encourage them to continue on with their journey, with their health. And I tell them that I hope that the time you spent with me, you know, opened your mind to some things, and maybe one day you'll come in and you'll think differently. And then, you know, I... I give them a welcome bag and you know tell Do them good luck. Do they prepay for that appointment? Pardon? Do they prepay for that appointment? Yeah, yeah. That, well, they we our patients prepay for almost all of their therapy. So once they're scheduled, they they're prepaying Come because in. I'm not scheduling three hours with somebody unless my time is paid for. Love it. And that's how we work. Yeah, that's uh, something that is. Uh, um, I, if, if I'm scheduling, and I and people come to me from hours away because I'm so yeah, far away too. that. Um, I say we got to take a credit card, you know, yep. because uh, if I'm going to give you this time, yeah. and I'm happy to give the time. So, <clears throat> and it, it, you have to decide for yourself. I'm not like her at all as far as the acceptance thing, although I have told a few people that I don't think it's really, I don't think that I'm comfortable. I just told one two, a week ago um, who doesn't want to fix his teeth and they're all mercury teeth falling apart. And and he keeps saying, what, is he seeing decay? I went, no, I don't see any decay. I think. You know, but you have this collapsing occlusion. And finally, I went out, and when he came in the door, and I'm like, look at dude, you're just really not, you can get it cheaper down the street. It's cheaper. 
well, I really want, because I heard you're good and I know you're good, you know. But uh, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm like, you're either going to do these five teeth now that are broken, or I can't fix your mouth anymore. And he laughed when he heard cheaper, man, he grinned. So, uh, 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 so, uh, so you, uh, you have to decide what you want, and then you build it. And most of the people, if they want just fillings and when they're failing, I do it. That's fine. They don't have to answer to my protocol. I still put them through the questions because I want them to start thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And then they have all kinds of health issues. And I say, you know, this is how I think about that health issue, and this is what I know about it. But you're, you're going to have to ask your doctor, I guess, because you go to... You know, you go to the, the, the witch doctor and decide. So that's, that's kind of, uh, your tools, you'll have to decide what tools you're going to use. The, uh, for metal testing, you need to use MELISA, the only metal testing there is. So if your patient has metal crowns or, uh, or implants and uh, you need to, you want to look at antibodies, you're going to order a MELISA, you have an in-house. And then Alyssa Act, I insist that that's the best um, uh, blood test for food intolerances and environmental uh, exposure intolerances. And um, then, of course, Clifford is the people that I go to for my um, testing of, of uh, antibodies against, um, that are present against the materials before I use them. And so um, I try to do the science stuff. I don't make everybody, some people make everybody take a Clifford. I don't make everybody, but I make sure that I explain that it's a check for presence of antibodies. And we want to make sure that if we're, especially if we're having like a prolonged <coughs> rehab case, I say, you know, I think I, you should do it, you know, especially if you have any health reasons. And if you're a hypersensitive person and you've got those kind of problems, you just do a Clifford, you know, I'm not going to start doing things and find out it's wrong. Every patient. Every patient. Yeah. Yes? Um, yeah. I, I kind of have a question, comment. I'm not really sure how it's going to come out. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's to you and to you, because it sounds like you both do things a little differently in terms of, like, you accept patients and you're a little more lenient, and I like what you're saying because it seems like you weed out people and it makes life a lot simpler to just yeah. like know who you're working with but at the same time I kind of feel like I want to have I, I know that what I'm gonna do is gonna be better than Joe Schmo down the street because I have the science and so I don't want them to go there because I know whether or not you understand ozone you're gonna get it because that's part of what I do so I don't really like ask the patients do you want ozone it's just like and now I'm putting ozone in. Like, I tell them what I'm doing as I'm doing it. No, I'm we the same, a, I'm have the have same to, way. You have to have a consent form. Like, we yeah, have a consent so. form. They sign that in the waiting room before they even come back for their appointment because every patient is getting ozone. So we inform them before they ever even talk to me. They have to sign a three-page document. And for me, for it's ozone? like this. It's like yeah. this. <laughs> I, I skipped the class on consent forms and and. School. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is there like, so I, 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 I don't use any consent forms. Sure, but the ozone consent, consent form that I have, so but, you know, I was trained no, by Phil Mollica and Bob fly. Harris. My patient because I'm taking the class, but the practice Bob lot, Harris yeah, had so like an attorney do it. You know, I mean, it's a really good yeah. consent form that. Yeah, Everybody so for the ozone, if you're, yeah, you might be, it might be smart. I didn't say I was smart. I just said I was a shotgun guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm telling you that um, um, I never, and I know other people, some of our friends, our good friends, they don't use, and some people insist that it's a must. So you have to decide what you're comfortable with. And I use ozone. The only time I get concerned about ozone and, and um, that maybe, I, and certainly I don't want the board to find out about is when I start sticking the needle in there and giving them, you know, 10 cc's of ozone in the jaw, you know, put an X tip in there and shooting that in there. Um, my patient thoroughly knows what it is. Most of them, want, that's what they're asking me for. I mean, almost every time they're like, hey, I want the ozone with this. I got a cavitation. Wait, why is that a problem? Because uh, as soon as the board, no, that's like, oh my God. They never even heard of ozone for one. I got my only board inquiry was that was a uh, board inquiry, not a patient complaint. 
and um, they wanted to know what ozone I was using it for. And I think I forgot to write that down. Damn. I wrote down that, you know, I put it in teeth and I put it in my water and we use it and stuff, but I I should call them and tell them that I <laughs> inject it sometimes. <laughs> so, um, uh, but, so, uh, 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 I, I, you know, I, I just, and they, and they found, they didn't know, they're like, well, what, are you, what are you using that for? The reason they're the board is because they're so freaking toxic, they can't do dentistry anymore. They're, you go there and their writing is like that, you know. So, uh, I'm sure there's good ones. But, uh, uh, but I, the people that I've dealt with, was uh, these people were not knowledgeable and they really just wanted to know like what are you doing with that you know and then they okay board met and they said carry on you know and so uh, they left me alone after that I think you need to do a merger of you definitely have to have a good relationship with your patient obviously you know the people that are going to sue you or you have poor relationship with them you have to have consents but you know that this book that came out toxic tooth which I did a review on and it's in Dan's newsletter but it you know, it's a cautionary tale about a dentist who had all, every consent form you can imagine, but the board came after him. So it's not a, you know, it's not necessary that someone's not going to, like if you, let's say you had an adverse reaction to ozone because you inhaled it and you didn't give them vitamin C right away or something like that, and they get upset about that or have some problem, I mean, they did have the, if you didn't have the consent, you might be really screwed, possibly. But, uh I don't know. I think it's a combination, but you definitely need a good relationships, and you have to build those. And you really should, if you're taking out a tooth, you should have a consent form. You know, not just a tooth, but some bigger things that you do. But I think these minor things, yeah. you need that too. So. Well, the only person who ever turned me into the board was a disgruntled hygienist. Who That's usually what it is. It's, it's either a, a neighboring and dentist she, or it's your employee. She went to the board and OSHA, yeah, and yeah. trust me, everybody swooped into my office, and I was like, pick it apart because you're not going to find anything. And we, we, we were fine, you know. So I mean, we're using ozone. It's it's approved for the applications in dentistry that we use it for. So she was mad. You said my way or the highway. <laughs> she, that's why you have to watch those hygienists. That's why we only hire ones that are fresh out. Of yeah, school. make sure that you. I married one. Jesus. <laughs> you went farther than that. Yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs> that's more. Yeah. Well, I suppose. The only that's problem more than you ever have with employees have yeah. been hygienists. So you know. So, uh, so my suggestion is look at tongues. This is something I've really been into, and when I think we really need. A lecture on in our academy. I thought that one up. We had one. I, I, and, I, and I wasn't at that. It must have been many years ago. Vegas. That was so pretty up there. Vegas about yeah. 10 years ago. Uh, this is, this is I tell you, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. they all mean things, and I can tell, mm -hmm. and that's really great. But uh, what is that? this is, there's your healthy tongue, you is know. A million border? I've been, I've been a very kind of interested to know these, like some people have these very red um, uh, um, papilla up here in the anterior and some people don't and I've been watching that and I don't know if it's because of the food they're eating that day or if they have some habit but it doesn't look pathologic to me anymore but I start looking closer with my loops and um, certainly um, you know I mean what's that you know, and so you know right away. I can look at people's tongue, and I'm like, okay, something's wrong. And that guy, um, that's Salvador Dali. Isn't it? That's uh, it's interesting. There's a there's a video of a girl that did that to her tongue, and they can actually when you split the tongue, yeah, they can do like any. They can pick up a, pick up a, a paper clip and go up and down with it, and then like throw it. And I'm like, wow, you know, your mind has this ability to do this. You know, I'm going to cut my fingers all in half and see if I can do like ten fingers on a hand. <laughs> so, but, um, so yeah, to, to, to the email and text thing. I mean, for us old guys, it was something kind of new. But it makes your your front desk is just like, okay, this is all all I do, um, and so not much phone call. Um, uh, email education, like I told you earlier, I do this kind of when I get back. And then if you're into Facebook, I have Facebook that I post some stuff. I will put something from this meeting on there. And when I see something wild, 
I will put it on there. I try to put only on my Facebook page wild stuff, and then it seems like, oh, God. I love to go back to it. I see it when you have a business uh, Facebook, you can see how many people have been there and shared it, et cetera. And like, and if I put it, if it's wild enough, within an hour, you know, we got 150, you know, people like I looked at it, like, yeah. You know, I, I'm getting the word out there, and it's usually something about fluoride or uh, who knows, uh, like that. So um, we talk. I, uh, you, this this thing is going to happen with smart. This is what when, when you guys become smart certified, um, we're going to have cards that are going to be made up for you to give to the doctors, your that the doctors, the integrative docs and things in the area and other people, anybody that you think will refer you or you can leave them and forget them at the grocery store on the counter. And um, um, it's going to say, go to SMART and look for a SMART dentist and you know, teacherdentist.com. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's going to be built in for you, cheap cards that you can buy that are going to be professionally done. And um, the partnering with the local, if you have, uh, you know, for me, this is a tough one, but I have found um, one doctor, a naturopath that I can actually work with, and we have a deal where, in the, because people, for me, travel for a long way, and for him, so we cell phone, and we keep our cell phones now, and if a patient, you know, I got Sally here, and um, she'd really like to meet you, and he say, yeah, okay, I, uh, about 15, 20 minutes, I said, she'll be there in a half hour or 45 minutes. <coughs> and he'll say, okay, I'll, and then, th then they just go. And it's free consultation, and the same thing coming my way. You come, I'm going to spend time with you and kind of let you ask questions, and you decide if you want to come here or not. And uh, that works really pretty well for me once I've got online with that, especially he's a young pra growing practice, so he needs patience. And um, so that, that, that has worked. Um, they, once you get very knowledgeable about this, I did lecture when I knew nothing. And now I think back when I, you know, because I was so fired up when I came to the academy. I'm like, all right. I went back and I went in front of these hygienists and I was like, oh my god, my face is still red from that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, um, you know, you can do these ads if you have local television station. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we're going to, I'm going to, as president behind the scenes and telling these guys all kinds of crazy ideas, I, I want to see um, us create an um, ad that, that everyone can use at their local theater where they run those ads before the show for SMART. Look for a SMART dentist, go to teacherdentist.com, you don't have to have your name up there because how many SMART people are going to be around? Not very many. <laughs> get, on the, get on the ball, baby. And then uh, um, you get, I use a local alternative magazines for the practitioners. All the needle stickers and stuff are in there. Just one quick thing, Mark, and the hooking up with alternative physicians and MDs, the group has to know because of the work of Kim and you and, and Jack that the meeting in Savannah is going to be doctors and dentists. And so with that beginning of that networking, I think you'll see it grow where the dentists, will, the doctors will be looking for you. And so being on that smart wagon is probably a good thing. Yeah, it's going to uh, it may become very visible with smart. And um, absolutely now, because their academy is saying, hey, you guys need to start looking at dentistry. Um, it, this is going to roll like you can't believe. And they came to us. That's cool. The doctors came to us wanting to wanting to integrate the meetings, so they're looking. So they, yeah, when you go to in, in, in try to hand them your cards, believe me, they're going like, okay, thank you, I, I appreciate that, you know. I have one ad thing that's pretty easy and doesn't cost a lot on NPR. You can sponsor or on public radio for the year. You just you're like at the same position before the program, uh, so that you have a mention and you can do like a 15 second thing. And then, like, I only pay fifteen hundred dollars for the year, I and mean, it's nothing. Really. So it's mentioned every day, and you know, I put safe removal of, of amalgams or mercury fillings. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and so now this is what I was just saying. And then, of course, if you decide you're not going to become smart, you have to make up your own materials. But you should still do the same: make up your own materials and hope they don't hear about smart. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the, uh, these are some of the things that you can get at our uh, from the main office that solves your problems with the, uh, converting your practice because I bought a mercury toxic practice and um, I was a little weak at the beginning but I should have thrown about half of them out and, and started from scratch and most of them have drifted away but you never know what has happened to me is I have had people all the time that have been coming and coming and coming and I say you know you get constant headaches well you know my guess would be that it's not you're not a grinder. I think you could you know could be the 18 amalgams you have, but um, that's I'm just guessing you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden I'm telling you all of a sudden, six years seven years later they come in and they go you know what I think I want my mercury out. Nope, I'm not taking it out. <laughs> you know no I'm just like okay great you know they took. The right person told them. So don't give up on them. That's why I take the, the side, you know, the, listen to them and then do what they want, but try to educate them. And it takes years, and each time you see them for a short visit, I try to give them something, send them email. Yeah. I, I, uh, I think you're in the parallel. I had a patient 70 years old. Uh, I had seen him for about three years, tried to get him to take the eleven fillings out. The eleven fillings huge. The whole team is broken. I trust you. And he wouldn't do it. And finally, I told him, I said, you know, will you agree with me to just take out the ones that if you don't take them out, you're going to lose the teeth? Yeah. And he said, okay, how many of those? I said, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> they end up being that way. Of course. I said, so let's just start. And he was, he lived part of the time in New England and part of the time in Florida. And so he was getting ready to, to go to New England. And so we took out nine. Okay. And I saw him six months later. And he looked good. He just looked different. You know? And I, I told him that. He said, well, you know, I feel different. He said, shortly after, maybe six weeks after you took those fillings out, I just started feeling better. So I, I went and had an MRI done on my, my head. And he said, there's no plaque there. I have had MS for 36 years. And I also have Parkinson's disease. He said, I have no symptoms of MS. There's not, nothing shows on the MRI. He says. The Parkinson's disease, I've got maybe 10% of the, the tremor that I have. So you it guys happens. are actually it happens. And did he really have those diseases or did he have mercury toxicity? There you go. Yeah. It yeah. happens. This is the kind of stuff I can tell you many stories. But that's the, you know? Yeah. Is there, so you guys are actually telling patients it could be your mercury? Cold. You should have yeah. this yeah. out. That's oh. a, I, do I tell, yes. You do? Don't, you don't do, do this. You do? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, guess what? Sorry. I'm not going to say it's your fillings, but I know this. I know that mercury is toxic, and it's 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 the second most toxic element in the periodic table. It happens to come out of your teeth 24 hours a day. You'll have to decide for yourself whether it affects your body or not. But uh, if I, it doesn't affect your body, I want to know Superman too, because mm -hmm. you're Superwoman, and I want to know Superman. Because I will tell you, you think for a minute that heavy metals aren't affecting you. There's lead, there's arsenic, there's gas. Uh, you're not eating organic food. You're eating metals every day. And you need to understand the half-life in your brain, which is 20 to 30 years. So now, take another breath. 20 years from now, half of that mercury will be out. The rest of it will still be in there. Now, wait a minute. You took another breath. Throw it. Let me start writing this down. <laughs> and then, you know, this is how I talk to them. And then... They get it. The half-life thing in your body is the most important thing to remember because that is how you explain it to practitioners that don't know. It's half-life. And so, so you tell them it's toxic, but you make no claim. Medical claim. You cannot claim. say you cannot that say any okay. filling in your mouth is, is going to correct your health right. or cause your health yeah, problem. Yeah, but you can test them. Yeah. We do testing. And if you test them and their mercury is up, I'm very sorry, Mr. Jones, you are indeed mercury toxic. So we do, I have a nurse, we do testing, we do, yeah. we do yeah, Shays tri test, or we do a provocated urine test. Sometimes we do a provocated urine test to see where they are, and if the numbers are up, then we are do the tri test. Silver, we do yeah. the tri test okay. by Quicksilver. So, I mean, if you do a test on them, and there, I mean, lots of times we find out, like, yeah, your mercury's up, your lead's up, your arsenic poisoned. Your, I mean, you can look at that patient and say, your your mercury toxic and is it possibly from your fillings? Well, yes. And if the board comes to me, I you know I have a test. Like we right. we tested you. 
you know, the, uh, uh, that's a, you, you know, testing is the definitive thing. And, um, but just having it in there um, is great. Most of the people that come to me with the sick are between the age of 40 and 60 because it takes all those years to accumulate. And I get very excited when a young person who's going to have babies wants their three little buckle pits taken out. I'm like, yes. I'm like, here's a smart thing. Hey, did you ever read about iodine? <laughs> <laughs> so then I send them the video. I send them the uh, fletches, all three of them. You know, this one was more about that. There's other things about that. So th this is the whole thing. When you you always have to remember that you're evolving. You know, because don't say no, no. Uh, you know, root canals are 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 good. Say today I'm thinking this. Because you are going to work, and and I am learning and changing every single time I come here. As I read, as Demir and I talk, he's like, wake up over there. Come on, you're going to hurt Try and get comfortable, okay? Just try to relax a little bit. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys, I want to tell you, this guy from Slovenia is a researcher. I hope to see, you will see. And, and Grega here is, a, both of these guys came together. They're starting a chapter in Europe. I'm a member. And this guy will probably be your one of your lecturers. He has amazing stuff. The leech therapy, I don't know if that'll make it up there, but uh, uh, there are some very interesting things that he does, never-ending endo, uh, a thing where uh, he believes that if you keep changing the dressing forever, that it's fine. And he has beautiful documentation of all this healing. And um, it's, it's income, you know. Have a profi, you come over here, I change the dressing, see in six months, and um, you know, pay at the desk. So it's never ending endo. And, and all of those things, you know, where are you? Like at first, I was afraid to talk about detox at all because I thought, man, they're coming to get me. You know, I was suffering in paranoia. And, um, uh, you know, I did a lot of metal implants for a long time. Now I, I um, would never do another metal implant if, if, unless the patient has them, understands the why. I, I, the, uh, why I do not do metal, and while I have four of the others, hey, just make sure it's the same metal. Make sure it's the same one. Then I think I kind of directed them properly. But uh, you know, they have problems. You better think about the um, electrical part of the whole thing. And um, if they are talking, you know, uh, to uh, Sarah Palin up in Russia with their um, uh, um, antenna um, implants, uh, I've had people tell me they swore they could get, like, sometimes things from them. They're probably having a problem, and you've got to do that ELISA test, and you can show them that they're actually, but it's not only antibody, it's also electrical. So you could take out all the other metals, but what about the titanium? Uh, implant with the gold screw and then the third world metal that goes on top of it. That thing is like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I thought that was in my ears. No, it's in your teeth, all right? So, so those things. Quick you, one here. You Quick have to was. just remember you're going to evolve. And here's my little. Was. Yeah. Quick, quick comment. I'm Real sorry. quick, I want to get in the implants before we go. Has anyone successfully placed the zirconia implants? Yeah. And what systems do you guys use? C system. C system. Yeah. The only one that's approved so far in the U.S. is C system. So it's, a two piece. it's the only two piece. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys right. record my lecture? No. Oh, I think they might have. They were setting up oh, something good. over there. Oh, good. guys did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna have to send okay. them a contract. Okay. All right. I just lectured on them. Yeah. I do a lot of them. I mean, because I pull root canals, and my patients want them out, and then, and I uh, always is um, putting the the the. the uh, Ceramic, they don't break. They're amazing. They're, they're amazing. They're coming the, out. The tissue is unbelievable. I, you can have full confidence with uh, with the ceramic implants. I can tell you that. In right six now. months, they're coming out with a, a bone level too. Uh, it's been the FDA, well, application went in this year, this month. So six months from now, we might have a bone level, and it's like a. Not, I don't own the stock, and I have no interest in the company. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's uh, basically uh, going to be a platform switch type thing where you're going to get the tissue to grow, hopefully get some fibers to c 
come over the top and uh, oh, they're, they, 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 the tissue is like growing over the you, know, you have to have two pieces of laser or electro yeah, two pieces they, 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 your oh, body and a taper that, those, that, 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 that zirconia they have yes um, zirconia I haven't figured out we talk about it like it's a porcelain but on the periodic table it's in the metals that's so. zirconium yeah. Okay, so they crystallize it. Okay, the periodic table has the metal column. Uh -huh. By definition, they are, the metal column has these properties. Uh -huh. When they crystallize it, when they heat sinter it, and they do the treatment, it has none of those properties. Okay. However, you can't say metal-free. You yeah. can say alloy-free. Alloy. alloy is a better word than metal-free. Because the zirconium is a metal by technique, even though it doesn't have the properties, zirconia is a metal, and as a result, saying metal-free uh, implants is incorrect. The technical. The biggest okay. problem with titanium is it's an alloy. Yeah. 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 nickel. Yeah, they don't seem to be shedding. They don't seem to be shedding. There's less so oxidation. They lose, so. the, yeah, yeah. they lose the original properties. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Become a new material. Okay. So just to get through this, because I know you guys got to go, but um, this were my mistakes when I started. The whole um, not taking out all the metal and afraid to say, oh my God, they've got like six metal crowns there. I'm not going to tell them because that's like another. 10, 12, 13, 15 grand, you know, but now my kid's in college, so now I make sure I tell them that first. So, uh, but no, I don't, I think you should take out the metal, but that you have to decide. The cone beam and, and doing root canals, are you going to do them? Maybe you're going to do them until you realize, or maybe you'll do them forever. Uh, maybe you'll do them never ending endo. Um, BPA, make sure you realize there's, now they, uh, the, at our meeting we have this new composite, uh, uh, what's it called, Admira? Well, the Bicoco Bico Admira Fusion. Fusion, just came yeah, because out. it's our okay. old Admira, pro, uh, you guys try it? it's BPA no, no. free, and the Boco, I promote, I they have always been the most consistent, as much um, organic kind of products that they can come up with. There's a molecule in the thyroid. It displaces the eye. It displaces the eye exactly. And your body actually doesn't recognize it. The, so the, the tests don't show. Don't show. Right. They don't show because they don't test for it. And oh. uh, then it's the you know, mechanism of loiter kind of stuff because you get the PSA. Too big a We got no thyroid. We don't get no thyroid. That's exactly what yeah. All the brom, all they have the halides, bromine, chlorine, fluoride, mercury, all displace eye. Yeah, if you look back, if you look back at, at the library, and you can uh, get uh, Fletch's lecture, lectures. He goes and explains all of that mechanism of how it inhibits your thyroid, and um, so yeah, thyroid is like one of the number one things, especially in women, um, and it's I it's always it's either fluoride or um, food intolerance problem with a cross uh, um, a, a reaction. And I look at both of those. The easy thing is some iodine to see and then like that, but they have to decide because uh, I'm just a dentist. As long as we're here, no? I, I did my postgraduate in, in computer environmental engineering. And kind of one of the topics uh, I was researching was uh, you know, surroundings of crematorium, crematory, yeah. where they yeah. cremate. And not only did, it, uh, did I found like uh, higher levels of mercury, they also found higher levels of fluoride in the cells. Because the bones. Yeah, the bones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's deposited in the bones. So we have that study that shows increased bone pressure with fluoride. Did you publish that? Did you, did you publish a, a, a paper on that? or no. It's just in the research? It's yeah. already uh, okay. it's already in research. So. Hmm. So, you know, there, um, you know, we make mistakes, we all make, and we all, uh, I don't lose any sleep about it because I'm mercury toxic and I'm forgetting. <laughs> so, uh, 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 but, you know, this is it. Just remember, things will change. That's the message. And don't be afraid. You're doing the right thing. You found the truth. Be happy. Mm -hmm. Be excited. You know, that's where I am with this whole thing. I'm excited more and more every day. I thank you for coming, for all of you for taking your time to come here.
I'm always available for you. Can always get a hold of me, uh, um, and I'm sure any member that you choose get a mentor if you're new, uh, or, or but if you have questions, you're getting into ozone. Look at people. You never had a more helpful group.